Hello, folks. It's another Hello, prehistory guys, prehistory flash. It's our occasional news show, bringing you interesting stuff from the world of prehistoric archaeology, bits of news that have caught our eye and we think deserve a bit more illumination. What do you think? That's a reasonable way of putting it, don't you think, Rupert? Hey, uh, I, I do. I, I, I do. I do. It's a perfect way of putting it. And before I say anything else, yes, uh, click that subscribe button underneath and you'll get to know all the other things that we're going to tell you about. Hey. Um, I shall, I'm going to take this off, I think, because I'm getting dreadful echo for once. Doesn't usually happen. Um, no. Have you cured it? Uh, no. Um, but uh, no. <laughs> but what I'm going to tell you is that at this flash, this news flash, this is really exciting because it's a perfect example of uh, climate change. It's terrifying and exciting both at the same time. This is climate change giving people massive discoveries. There is, this is, it's going into Langfona, I think it's pronounced, in south-central Norway. Yeah. And melting glaciers. This is a patch on a melting glacier. And... Uh, they, it has revealed 68 arrows which spread over 6,000 years of prehistory. Mm. It's mm -mm. just staggering. And it's I'm this show, I'm going to show where the, uh, the location is there, uh, yes. Rupert. Yeah, um, up in uh, Norway, I mean, for what it's worth. And uh, a little bit more focused... Um, uh, again, we're, we're not familiar with the topography of Norway particularly, but for, for those that are interested, um, there you go. Um, it's one of those cases where the headlines that we, we've seen and the headlines you may have seen uh, out there, slightly, we often find this, actually belies the content of the archaeological paper that is actually at the root of it. Sometimes... The press releases, whatever the university or the archaeologists uh, give out, um, it, you know, everybody's aware of the skill and art of, of clickbait. And mm. the uh, articles and the headlines we've seen focus on the retrieval of the artefacts that are coming out of, out of the ice, which is fascinating, you know, because it tells a bit of a story about those 6,000 years span and, and what... Uh, was going on in the Neolithic Bronze Age and and, uh, and the Iron Age in terms of hunting in those areas over that stretch of time, but that wasn't really that isn't really the focus of the of the paper itself and what's exciting about it. So what should we do? Should we look at you know some of the stuff that's been they've been taking out, or should we first yeah, and, and on, then yeah, yeah, look at you know what the real reason for the study is? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so to give it a bit of visual context, we're talking about ice patches and the melting out of ice patches and what's been coming out of them. Actually, we should make a little bit of a distinction between an ice patch and a glacier because it, they bring very, very different, if they've got stuff in them, whether it's paleozoological or whether it's uh, artefacts of one sort or another, glaciers not good because they mash things up but these static um ice patches what they call them it seems to be a technical term actually preserve pretty much you know what was dropped on them and and in times of of climate change like this when there's melting occurring that those artifacts and and, and remains that are in there uh, sort of shed out at the uh, at the margins mm. so that's a distinction yeah. i suppose between a glacier and uh, and, a, and an ice patch um, well, it can be quite confusing when you have ice patches that form on glaciers and yes. uh, and with the natural <laughs> movement that happens with that. So yes, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. it is that race against time with all of this aspect yeah. of archaeology. So what's been happening is uh, guys like uh, this, you know, have been examining this. Uh, but it, well, I'm afraid we don't have a name for him. <laughs> We've been no, sadly examining. they didn't name him in the uh, in, yeah. in the uh, paper. Have, you know, unusually been able to find ancient artifacts just on the surface, like like this, masses of stuff yeah. like this. Yeah, that's a re relatively recent uh, thing. I think that's probably barely 
uh, what, 1,500 years old, perhaps? perhaps? I wouldn't but, even think it's as old as that, actually. i tell you what, though, it, old, as it, uh, old, <laughs> old as it may be, I've seen artefacts when I used to have a garden shed, you know, from <laughs> <laughs> in worse condition than that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In the garden shed, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Sad but true. <laughs> uh, as, apparently, that is a, a, a Neolithic arrow shaft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a bit more recent of a, a, an arrow shaft. That this one uh, looks a bit older to me. Uh, in the palm yes. of a hand, um, wonderful, wonderful. told that's a, a quartzite. Uh, arrowhead turning out there. Um, oh, that's for a bit later. But those yeah. are the thing, sort of things that are that have been turning out. Well, I think you know, stats-wise, if you if you take on board that this melting ice has revealed these sixty-eight arrows, and there are five separate arrowheads that they've found in isolation. But they spread from, the oldest one is 6,180 years old, uh, is how that's dated. And the most recent one is 680 uh, years old. So it's from <laughs> deep Neolithic, really, into, uh, you know, right up into Viking territory. So hmm. it's just, a, a, the, the point is that this region was clearly a very important hunting ground over all that time. Yeah. Almost all that time. Uh, there's a mm. couple of gaps in the record, but um, but yeah. No, uh, well, well uh, talking of gaps in the record, it might as well talk about this uh, this graph, uh, which uh, you know is uh, sort of deep into the paper, but it's a fascinating mm. graph um, because the top uh, curve shows um, the incidence of uh, artifacts over time. And the middle graph shows the incidence. Do you know of what? Bef before you before you distinguish between the um, uh, the aspects, uh, just point out that put it back. Just point out oh, that sorry. the uh, <laughs> that the grey bars, the grey vertical bars. If it's not obvious, the grey mm -hmm. vertical bars are at the uh, the more extreme glaciation points. Oh right, okay. Uh, so white is less ice, grey is more yeah, ice. Yes. So that makes more sense of now uh, what you were going to distinguish between those bands. Well, yes, the the, the middle curve is the uh, paleozoological material, i.e. the mm -hmm. stuff that animals leave behind. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting to see where the curves don't meet. You know, where you've yeah. got, seems yeah. to have a lot of human activity, you seem to have fewer animals, and you know the thing is, you know, from first sight, you read from that. Well, obviously, humans and animals don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except it's interesting, though, isn't it? That 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 if you look at just take that band at two thousand years ago, yeah. Where if you look at the paleozoological band, that you've got absolute maximum of uh, of animal record, if you like, and the yeah. absolute minimum. Of of human artifacts and yeah, it's, it's it's so distinct just in that little band there. But the the thing is that I think that the that that graph kind of misleads because where you've got a dip in the animal remains, you could read it that it's humans that have been taking the remains away. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah you could so you've got to be so careful. How first you sight is misleading. Show. Yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah. just sort of. Saying that it's one of those little trip uppy yeah. things that can uh, can happen in instances like yeah. this. Well, they they found um, the, the thirty one pieces of uh, reindeer antler and bone. Yeah, uh, and out of those thirty one, there's a few of them that are modern, but most of them range from just under five thousand years ago to the most recent being only 350 years old but the majority of them are going back into you know fairly deep prehistory so mm. uh, there's an interesting window 
where they found no human artifacts between 2,130 years ago and 1,720 years ago. Is that on so the graph, that, that, Rupert? That, so, um, uh, yeah, just not so not so distinct there, really. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, so you've got a 400-year patch where uh, there are, they've found no human yeah. artifacts at all. Now, I suppose that doesn't mean to say they're not there. It just means that they're not in that patch um, yeah, yeah. because they are three distinct patches of the glacier where they've um, been finding these items. But we're, we're getting a bit stuck in the long grass here because <laughs> obviously there is analysis of the kind that we're sort of attempting to do and the artefacts themselves that have come out of here are fascinating. But that's not really the thrust of the paper, is it? If you read no, the paper, it's not, it's not um, about the, the artefacts. It's, a, it's about the fact that since climate change has been accelerating, we have a new kind of archaeology, mm. which has not really been encountered so much before. I think we covered this, actually, in one of our previous podcasts, but that's a, another story is we've got a, um, a, a whole panoply of stuff uh, coming out of the ice uh, that is mm. melting. But alongside of that comes a huge um, problem in terms of uh, analysis. It's all right, it's, we always say this about archaeology. It's not about the thing, it's about the context. Mm. And what this paper is about... You know, uh, as an old, um, is, you know, when we, we f uh, talk about archaeology, normal archaeology, going on a dig and, and, and troweling things out, you've got a context for things. It's next to something else or it's at a particular level or a strata. So there's a certain amount you can tell about what was going on back in the past. This is different. And this study is really asking the question of what we can learn about how to interpret how things come out of the ice and mm. what uh, parameters we can establish uh, at these particular ice patches now while this stuff is melting out that's really mm. going to inform how we analyse stuff coming from this kind of archaeology in the future. Mm. It's, it's so difficult because, you know, as, as you said, you know, the point is that ice leaves no context Hmm. These uh, these items are only found because the ice has melted. Um, so, uh, you know, if these animals were hunted while the ice was thick, hmm. then, you know, because, you know, these these arrows, no nobody just leaves an arrow behind. You know, these are these are arrows that have been lost whilst hunting. Um, because otherwise they'd have been retrieved. So uh, so people have been shooting at animals and missing. <laughs> and uh, and so and so this arrow then r remains and gets covered in ice we learn nothing about the people who fired those arrows um yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, you know essentially so it's you know some of the other things that they've found they or found rather they or, or rather, for but example, that's the whole but, thing with this paper it is actually highly technical and mm. it is aimed at to uh, you know at uh, examining you know, how deep in the ice things are before they come out, how things fall out of ice, what that can say about the level that what they were in originally. The different mm. taphonomy, really important point of this, the rates of decay of stuff, because it's different in ice, and how different mm. things at different strata, the, you know, the different rates of decay that occur. So Brian just mm. said stuff that melts out of the ice has no context, thanks ice, but that's exactly what this paper is actually trying to redress you know what can we learn about this stuff in order to try and give it context although uh, the circumstances is really really difficult shall, mm. shall i just read that bit from from the paper that, that, that i think nails it uh, the, the link to the paper yeah, is in the good, description it's a good explainer yeah yeah it said says this is from I mean, it's quite a long paper, but this uh, is from the, <laughs> the, uh, near the beginning. It says, this study asks to what uh, degree um, these chronological and uh, spatial patterns are influenced by site formation processes. The, it, so it's asking questions about the, how this site actually gets formed. 
including the tophony, i.e. the rate at which uh, things decay. Taking these processes into account, can the, find, can the fine distribution nevertheless yield information on the organisation and chronology of human activity, mainly hunting, at the site, and the size of the ice patch at various times during the Holocene? These are fundamental and previously unanswered questions for Langefonner and the field of glacial archaeology more generally. I think that's the point. The field of glacial archaeology is brand new. And these are sort of pioneering yeah. efforts to try to understand it. I think, you know, yeah, that's... Yeah, we've, we've, we've mentioned a few examples, haven't we, of, uh, because there's, they've been finding stuff in, you know, melting ice in, uh, in the Alps, uh, in Siberia, and uh, now this is in Norway. I think there was some in Sweden yeah. as well. Uh, it's a race against time. Yeah. These yeah. guys have got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so mm. I, I, th I think we've, we've kind of made the point... We, they've got their hands on a brand new form of archaeology, and these guys are pioneering how to how to look at it, and how to extract um, the most information uh, that we can going forward, out out of as more and more stuff falls out of the ice. Yeah, it's quite what lovely. more yeah. can we say? We can't say any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, as yes, ever, thank you, thank you, thank you to our Patreon supporters for being I just, just a, say that. Yeah. <laughs> a fantastic crew. Yeah. And um, if, you, if you'd like to think about joining our wonderful Patreon folks, uh, there's a link in, in the description to our Patreon page. So I think, I think that's it. As ever, I suppose we could have gone on forever, but... Uh, we're keeping these short, keeping these... We're trying to keep these short tight. so that you actually can uh, find the time to watch them more regularly. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back pretty shortly with some more news items because there is just so much going on at the moment. All right. Till the next time. See you, folks. Bye-bye.